All right, Jordan Belfort here, the Wolf of Wall Street in the Wolf's Den with a special episode. This is like the greatest episode ever because I have right in front of me, not the food, but the food god. All right. Wow, I am so excited to How be here. How are you, here. my friend? So, I didn't know we were going to get food right away. So I no, started I got seeing the f- food. I'm like a dog. I start drooling. I know. We're not so, getting to that yet. That's a, we so a long way to go. Tell me, first of all, tell me why you're the food guy. I, right. I think it's a freaking great name, Thank by you. the way. So Thank tell you. me why you're the god of food. Thank you. Well, you know what? So I've been on a television show for 14 years, The Kardashians. Um, Kim is my best friend. And I was on a very big show that people know me around the world. But at some point, I got tired of just doing club appearances because, you know, you, I, I used to do PR. I own big PR firms, uh, 20 people working. Every, you know, I, we did huge events, Diddy, J-Lo, everybody back back in those days. And then um, I started being on TV. So then I was like, all right, I'm not nothing to do with PR. It's v- the, the hardest thing was becoming a reality TV star from a publicist because I could have been a mortician and had it easier than than being from a publicist because it was like you know I used to put the red carpets on and then I'm like all of a sudden I'm walking on the red carpets it was a very abusive (laughs) abusive kind of situation to put myself into because those same photographers that I'd be like all right here comes this person here comes this person now they're like you know, what are you doing on the red carpet right 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 well I'm on a big show and then I got my own show back called Spin Crowd, which was about PR. And that was kind of like transitioning into like a reality star because I said I needed my own show. And we fought nail and tooth, is that's the expression for this show, for two and a half years. We had an on-air pilot, a, a, this pilot, a, that pilot, and we finally got greenlit. Um, the show did amazing, even though it only was one season because the head of the network Ted left E and then it just turned into disarray and they said hey you know we want to put you on Kim and Courtney take Miami and then we kind of moved into that I didn't argue a big thing that people love to do with TV people is fight for money and fight for if you get a TV show be happy head to netsuite.com slash wolf for a special one of a kind financing offer that's netsuite.com slash wolf netsuite.com slash wolf let me ask you a question so what do you think it is about certain people someone like yourself or beecher this ability to navigate this world of celebrity pr and become famous for almost being famous to then turn that into a a real actual right. functioning business is, right. that a, is that a natural born talent or is it a skill set that you learn like how did you figure that out you can't learn it i've always so the, you know back before there was reality tv or instagram or tiktok th- there's no way for someone like myself to become famous because right. i don't sing and i don't act that's right. the only way you could get famous back then right you know, but that's it. There's no other option. Well, you so, do what I did. Yeah, but that, that's a different. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's a lightning that's bottle, infamous. Right. Exactly. That's yeah, a, that's yeah, infamous. Yeah. But a famous, like I'd watch people. I'd be like, all right. So there's no way I'm gonna be that. But I love that. So I want to work in that field. So I was like, all right. So let me see what I want to do. Let me oh, an agent. That's a great thing because you go to Hollywood and yeah, it's easy to be an agent. I failed the test. Right. I took two tests. I failed it. What kind of test do you take to be an agent? You have to be, t- to be in the, in the mail room. Uh, you have to take like a typing test, all this crap. I don't know, whatever it is. I'm not meant for that kind right. of job. I don't know. It never was. I'm not an administrative guy. Right. So I never got that. So I was like, all right, n- next. Uh, like, I'm not going to be an agent. Like, all right, what's another way to work on red carpets and stuff? I'm like, PR. So, but you know, you think of PR as like parties, but it's not. It's like press releases. You have to do like junkets, all that kind of stuff. Also not my kind of vibe. You know, but I did love the red carpet. So I worked, you know, I worked at a company where we did movie premieres. I don't know if you know Peggy Siegel. She's been around forever. Yes, I do. So I worked for her. I worked at a modeling agency. Um, that's how my kind of start is you really have to, you know, people are like, you can't have a million jobs. And I did until you figure out what you want to do. And I just think that's another really big lesson for people, which they don't know these days. I feel like everyone's just online and trying to be an influencer. But I kept doing these jobs. I was an intern at David Letterman. Then I worked at a modeling agency where I started, was an assistant, but I would start taking the models to movie premieres, which they never did there before. So I'm like, how do I go to these fun events? Great, we have supermodels. The girl on the cover of Vogue, I'm gonna take her to the Gia movie premiere. 
And then that's how I met this other girl, my friend Allie, who introduced me to Peggy Siegel. She's like, well, we're doing these premieres. I'm like, this is fun. I'd rather do this than sit on a modeling board. It's just not fun for me. So then I moved on to that. I'm like, okay, what's the next step? I like working with the talent. So let me do personal publicity. Right. So I'm like, great. Every day I would have Jake Gyllenhaal, this one, that one, which I saw him at the Ambulance movie premiere. Um, amazing movie, Michael Bay. Everybody should see it. Crazy. Finally, there's some movies to get people back in the right. theaters. I'm, you know? I can't believe I missed this oh, premiere. I, I was supposed to go and you have no I, idea. I just was so tired and I forgot. Action packed, like the good old days Michael. of big yeah. movies. And like, we need those. It just can't be sitting about watching it at home. I'm right. sick of it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sick of it. Like I want to go back Sunday nights to the movies. The big seats, I wherever agree. I am, yeah, LA, yeah. New Jersey, yeah. Florida. I love Sunday night's dinner. We go to the movie or we eat dinner at the movie. Right. That stopped completely. Like Sunday nights I hate in general. And now the movies are cut out of them. You know what I mean? So I want people to like make movies like this Michael Bay blockbuster. Right. Um, so then that's what I was doing. So then I did personal publicity. And then the world changed. There was Paris and Nicole. And I met Paris Hilton, you know, years of going out in New York and doing movie premieres and all that. She was like this young heiress, Hilton, you know, gorgeous, stunning girl. And uh, she was around town. And then all of a sudden I got this show, which was amazing. And I'm like, you know, and I, be I was became really good friends with Nicole Richie. And I'm like, I could, this is this now I could do. There's a chance for me here because before I couldn't, because I knew that like I would make Nicole laugh hysterical. She makes me laugh. She made the country laugh. The, right. the Simple Life was the funniest show on TV. And I would be like, you know what? When I go with her, I get black and blues from her because she hits with her little bony hands right. from when I used to make her laugh. And I'm like, all right, so there's a chance at this. But I'm like, you know, my family doesn't own Hilton and my dad's not Lionel Richie. How do you get to that? to that kind of level uh -huh. it was only like big celebrity families you know the next person i met was kelly osborne and i met her through my friend that was on tour uh that was like running around like a basically like a groupie on tour this girl a, a wife of someone i knew and she's like oh i became friends with kelly osborne and she's going to be in the city and do you want to take her out i'm like well she's like 17 years old right? where can i take her out i'm like all right i'll sneak her into sweet 16 right and so i saw kelly and we you know she was already going out in la without me it's not like i was doing anything new so you know i see kelly she's still a normal girl her dad is ozzy osborne very cool i don't care she's a really yeah, nice girl. amazing i mean well that's how beecher i mean it's the connection, right? It's all, they're all, that's, so that's for Beach. Beach met her through you. Of course, he did. Ah, okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he did. they had a podcast together for yeah. a very short yeah. I played a great practical joke yeah. on them in podcast. Did you? I pretended I relapsed on cocaine. I oh went, oh my god, I put, you like, were not. I put baby powder in my <laughs> nose, right? And I had it like in my nose, Whoa. like just a little bit coming out, right? And I showed up there and I'm like, I need to use the bathroom. I, I showed up there, like, sort of like this, right? I said, I need to use the bathroom real quick. So I said, yeah, it's over there. I go in there. I, fucking strategically put it right I come back in I said I'm like alright guys we need to fucking rock and roll right and I start acting like I'm high as a fucking guy <laughs> and they're sitting there in the chair That's like awesome. fucking panic stricken wow they're like they're like frozen like fucking statues right and I'm like come on guys we're gonna fucking break a dent in the universe it's gonna be fucking crazy and, and, and they start texting like they're texting is he on fucking coke and, oh. and I'm saying I'm wondering uh, here's the question are they gonna fucking say something to me right. I'm wondering right. how long is right. it gonna go on right. anyway and they're just looking like they're fucking petrified right. and they're like oh okay I'm um, and Jeff's like this. He's like, he's like, you know, doing this, trying to clean the fucking. Um, and then just finally, I'm like, what's wrong? What are you? You guys are fucking. What's wrong with you guys? They're like, no, nothing. <laughs> you guys, you wanna? Do you wanna go wash your face? Like you'll, you look, you explain, dude. I'm not. What are you fucking? Stop. We need to fucking rock and roll. We gotta right, go. Let's do Time this. Let's go. Right. right. And then they're like, fucking, oh, okay. I'm like, you guys are so fucked up. Yeah. I'm like, you're not going to fucking tell. Yeah, you, what about the fucking Coke? They're like, right. it's fucking baby powder. You fucking, and they fucking died. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly must have peed her pants. She she's, a good, she's a good laugher. She's a, she's she's a, a good audience. Literally, it yeah. took about 30 seconds for them to like, ah, nervous. Like they, right. they, they couldn't process right. it. Cause I was, right. I, I said, maybe I could be an actor actually. That was really that was good. fucking, you tricked I was, me right now. I'm telling you, I was that acting. Been yeah. fun. I wish you did that to me. That would have been great. I would have been like, oh fuck, what do I do? All right. So the C CFOs that get it, get it. And the CFOs that don't, don't. Let's talk about the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer. Today's CFO is critical to the strategy and success of the business. And in growing companies, there are two kinds of CFOs. One who's struggling to keep up, spreadsheets everywhere, manual processes, errors, and lack of visibility into the numbers. It takes weeks to close the books. The other kind is on top of their game. Automated reports, 
inventory, e-commerce, and HR flow into the financial model seamlessly. Insights come with the click of a button. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. That's why NetSuite is the number one cloud-based financial system used by over 28,000 growing businesses. Like I told you, the CFOs that get it, they get it. And the CFOs that don't, don't. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. NetSuite.com slash wolf. NetSuite.com slash wolf. What are you saying though? I, I, I get it. So in other words, you- It so, was an evolution. So that, oh, so, but you so, move comfortably in this world of celebrity. Uh, that and, for me was the most comfortable. The next thing was like, how am I going to do it? Right. I have no idea because once again, Kelly Osborne, Nicole Richie, like these people. Right. Wealthy fa families. Wealthy, but not famous just wealthy. Father. Famous. Right. Super, sure. super sure. famous. And, uh, you know, so then, and, and the show didn't even start Kelly's show. So I meet her. We hang out. Two weeks later, the Osborne's premieres. Then we can't walk down the street. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. This is a whole new world of TV. You have to be an actor. You don't have to be a musician. There's a chance. And then... A little bit, it opened up to people that had personalities, reality TV, and like it wasn't just celebrities. And now I'm like, all right, I gotta do this show. I gotta do so. Um, you know, I was doing PR and I had this. I was like, I woke up miserable, depressed one day, and I'm just like, I gotta be on. I don't want to do PR. I don't care. I love. Right. I love this. So Simon, who was my business partner at the time, who worked for me then, he's like, I'm gonna call Buna Murray and I'm gonna get us an appointment and blah blah blah. Buna Murray is a production company that's done. Right. You know, every every show in the world they were doing simple life they did uh, the low hands every a real world every show so he's like i'm gonna call i'm gonna call him of course left a message no one would ever call back just a random solicited call and ironically two weeks later i go to a birthday party and i end up sitting next to kim and uh their show didn't even start yet and i'm like you know i told her i, I made up a story i said hey you know i was good friends with benny medina who was jayla i said benny medina wants to do this show with me a pr show i said uh i'd rather do it with you and she's like, well, I'll call Ryan Seacrest and Buna Murray and, you know, I'll tell them about it. I said, I want to do a PR show. I want to make it fun. I want to make celebrity. I want to, you know, because I knew I needed celebrity angle still. Right. Because I wasn't, first of all, girls are the, girls are reality TV stars more. So as a guy, I'm like, all right, so I, and without a famous family, I need to get the celebrity kind of show. So I was like, mm -hmm. great, we'll do products and we'll have celebrities and we'll make it Hollywood and we'll make it fun and this and this and this. A week later, Kim calls me. He's like, hey, they want to meet you. And I'm like, oh, can you come to Beverly Hills Hotel meet with uh, a guy named Jeff Jenkins at Buna Murray? And I'm like, great. And I t come and I pitch the show. And I remember, I think like Nancy Reagan was uh, sitting behind us at the Polo. Line. I'm like, this is fucking insane. I love this. This is this is the Hollywood. She was sitting with like Betsy Bloomingdale who's got a diamond, had a diamond ring the size of my watch. I've never right. seen a ring like this. And I'm like, this is Hollywood royalty. This is a day that's meant to be. So I told Jeff, Three hours later, we went to meet John Murray, who was Buna Murray, and uh, they loved it. And they gave us $50,000, which is unreal because usually you do a little 10-minute sizzle. We did a full-on pilot. They paid for a full pilot. We did this humongous like sh thing at STK with this jean company, red carpet. It was Halloween. And it was like so many, so all the hills and all those people back in the day came. And uh, and it was like the most amazing pilot. We went and then this took forever and it just went to E and they're like, we love it. Let's do an on-air pilot. So we did another thing uh, with Mel B um, and, and at Sugar Factory. And then we finally got the show greenlit. And then I had my own PR show and, and that was, that was it. So I got myself on TV, which is, you know, someone randomly from New Jersey and another thing that's almost impossible. Um, and I pulled that off and then Kim show the Kardashians were airing. So at this, cause it was going to be the same channel. Kim was a right. producer. They started putting me on that show, but I got such a great reaction and memorable that I'm really still the only person that's been on from like season two. All the way through, you know, I'm on uh, an episode or two right now on the new Hulu show, but that's because I was filming my Food God show for Discovery and Food Network. I didn't have time. And once again, another barrier that I did. I am like the first person ever on the Food Network that's not a chef, right? Which is impossible. How did you jump from from that life to specializing food in food? The food yes, God. so that's it. So 
getting back the reality TV. And that whole time was kind of ending to me. And uh, they started having a lot of kids. And, you know, this one was pregnant. This one was pregnant. And I analytically was like, okay, my time of us going out and this and that and going to eat is going to start getting cut in my head. Even though it is a reality show and it's not nothing. It's not sure. like, it's not like written or based on, but I just felt like, oh, all of a sudden they're going to be with the babies and then like family trip and all Those that story stuff. Storylines, right. Didn't that, right? It just wouldn't make sense. I, I just knew, you know, I'd be on, but I wouldn't be, sure. I knew. The so main and I'm player, like, right? what am I going to do? I can't do club appearances for, you know, $10,000 in, in, in Atlantic City for the rest of my life, you know? So because it was such a great run of reality TV that I lived so great either way. I'm like, I love, you know, I got treated well. I didn't have to pay for this sure. or your hotels and, you know, and anywhere in the world, like UK, wherever it is people knew people knew the show and they knew me from the show and it was right. very recognizable and that's the one thing why it always helped that the long hair people see me in one second they're like oh my god oh my god oh my in a second like uh so you know that was crazy and then i said what do i do the best what do I, instagram's already in real life what do i do that gets the most reaction i don't do fat first of all i don't want to compete with anything and i don't want to compete because you cannot compete but even go into a category that anything that any of the girls were doing uh you know kim or kylie or Anybody, I don't know, fashion, beauty, none of that. I'm staying away from all of that. What's the one thing that they don't do? They don't do food. And then what's the one thing I get the most reaction to um, when I post? And that's what another lesson for people. Find the thing that every that they have like the more likes than everything else mm. and find that little niche that you're doing. And I said, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into food, but I wanna be. I don't want to be a name of a blog or something. I want to really commit to it. I don't want to be Jonathan that's, you know, eating daily or some kind of crap. I want to be like the thing. And uh, so I was like, I have to figure out what this is. And I was with two of my friends, Brian and his girlfriend, Senya, were sitting in Sugar Factory and they brought me this cheeseburger, but instead of cheese, it was white chocolate. So I was like, God, I got to come up with something. I don't know. I need to come up with this name because I really want to live this. And he says, what about food guy? And I go, oh, I don't know. And she's like, what about food God? And I'm like, oh, it just sounded. The angels. But instantly, it wasn't even a, <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe. I'm like, food God just sounds so good and so right. So she tells me this name. I said, okay, I love the name. I got to see Instagram, we'll see if it's available, see if any, whatever it is. I said, but I need to test it with Kim and Kanye because if they think it's like humiliating and embarrassing, I'm not doing it. And that was like my big test. So we were going to, um, uh, what's it called? Iceland. And Kanye was doing a video. We were filming the show and we were in the VIP. I've been there. Iceland's very cool. Isn't it the most amazing, yeah. beautiful very place? Cool. So the Blue Lagoon, the whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. everything. Landing in the glacier. The people, the everybody's fight. blonde. Outside the hotel, you look out the window, all the fans standing out, yeah. everybody's blonde. Everybody. The other thing about the Blue Lagoon is that it's actually like a waste factory for is it? cosmetics plant. Oh God, we didn't even ask. They closed <laughs> it for us. So we had it to ourselves. So, you know, four of us and the whole Blue Lagoon. So it's so beautiful and the mud yeah. is probably dirt. No, no it's, oh, it's actually the, from, it's the wastewater oh, God, from great. a factory. From like either a, a, gener a steam or energy generation, but it's not unhealthy for right, you. But that's like, right. I, you think it's right. a naturally occurring thing. It's no. actually not. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, forget about that part of the story. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's awesome, by the yeah, way. <laughs> yeah, no, felt really. The pictures are beautiful with blue water. So that the picture is all that matters. So we're sitting in this VIP uh, private area. And I said, so I, I'm like, how am I going to bring this up without being humiliated? Like telling someone you're changing your name to food guy. Right. I'm like, so I'm doing this stuff with the food that I, I literally, I'm going to change my eyes. I'm like, literally going to change my name to food God and uh, no reaction. I'm like, all right, at least they didn't say it's horrible. Right, right, right. But she's like, whatever. Nobody, no paying attention. Okay. Nothing. So I said, I'm going to go eat. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to go in the, I'm going to go. There's like a McDonald's or something in the airport. They're like, we're coming too. And I'm like, oh God, I know what was going to happen in the airport because we're in a normal airport. Right. So I was like, oh Jesus. So of course we get out and all of a sudden it turns into a complete pandemonium with thousands of people surrounding us and i'm at this mcdonald's line literally about to order and i'm like can i get a and out of nowhere five minutes later kanye goes yo food god get me a diet coke and once kanye said that because i just realized when it resonates with a genius like him whose brain is times a million more than any human which people you know sometimes don't realize this guy is like the smartest person i i i, I met and know the second he said it Right away, I go, I am fucking food god. And the whole entire trip in Iceland, that's some food god vibes. That's food god, food god, food god. 
it was non so he wouldn't stop saying it and i'm like oh that's it because he because of him and the fact that in one minute without me ever saying it again he kept saying it i knew that anybody else it would resonate instantly because with if it works with him then you're okay. gold and that was it and i became food god and so t- what does it mean to be the food god so god food god so food god food god, food god. god. well first of all you just you know it's the top of the of the of the level my my whole thing is it was only people showing recipes and kind of like these foods. And I said, that's not fun in this world of visual. People want to see the product. So I was always showing pictures of amazing food, over the top food. And it was great. Then like, I, like taking a picture of the food when it comes crazy out. Crazy pancakes. My wife fucking loves that. Right. But this, was in a, photog- this is before everybody was really doing it. It's so like I, a real big thing, the photograph. Huge, I don't get it. Like, huge. It's a huge thing. So we would like get crazy pancakes dripping and I would take the what's food. What's the place? The, gr- the, the griddle? The on, griddle. Yes. Yeah, on LA. Yeah, those are huge too. We have like uh, brownstone fat pancake right? factory in Jersey. There's a thousand of them. But that's when it started with those pancakes and this. Okay. And then I was like, all right, well, everyone's doing food now. People started posting fo- food pictures. So right. I'm like, okay, so I can't be basic i need to move on to the next level and i said let me do videos so i would video the food and talk and i'd be like wow look at this you know we have to look at these tacos i can't believe this gold golden shrimp from blah, blah, blah. which so let's, was let's talk about this okay so we have three tacos here right right so you know your guys brought these tacos i guess it's on but what's the story the, what's the story? Yeah. story is these three tacos are from the top of in miami and but the thing is they're like low end to high end but yeah. all well, all highly rated. They're all highly rated. Top. Okay, so the question top. is, ha- which one is the most expensive? Yeah, I don't know. You can well, pick which out is the most which is the be- best? best. I'll tell you what, what I think. Can I give you my humble well, of opinion? Course. I'm going to think that this is the, the most expensive because the shrimps are the largest and they're kind of U15s, right? There, and the bigger <laughs> shrimps are going to cost more money, I would U15. think. Well, uh, yeah, under 15 per pound. Let me taste them. So definitely, this one is out. This shell has. Yeah. This which is one? literally like you made this in the Let me kitchen. You say which one? Which one? This one's this out. One. No, the first one. The, oh yeah, this one. Sorry. This one's out. Wait, hold on. Is that that? Yeah, that's this one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so now it's it's, it's between these two. Now fried isn't always better, but they threw in some jalapenos to disguise it. Mm. But the shrimp and the and the and the and the shell mm. look much better on this one. Okay. Let me see. Oh my god. Is that one a good one? Um. <laughs> okay, wait. The food god has spoken. Like I'm uh, nothing compared to the food god that comes yeah, to the food. No, I'm not. Because, you know, I don't eat that How much. How many videos do you think you've done? Huh, huh. Yeah, Thousands. Thousands, right? Don't fuck with the food god. Hold on. No. Thousands. Let me try this one. Is it the it food god really or just food god? Just food. I didn't want to be no, the. No, it's food god. I didn't want to be the. Like the Facebook. No, food he's god. food god. Don't fuck with food god. Not the food god. And we'll talk about how I changed my name legally. Right. I legally went to court to change it. Yeah, I went to court. to court to change it. Hmm. Hmm. So, let me tell you my opinion. My humble, my humble opinion. Mm-hmm. This one's a little bit soggy, but I could just be sitting out here. sitting for sitting sure. Out, right? So it's not fair. I, I didn't taste this one yet. What's up? What's up? What's up? This shell feels like a brick. I, I, you know what? You're going to be surprised when I tell you. It feels like a brick. It's so hard. I can't even bite through it. Actually, it tastes pretty good. The thing is, is oh. like these ta- so I've had a taco from each of these spots, so I definitely understand where you guys are coming from. But the one in the middle is... My favorite one. This which is, one. Which is yeah. the, this is unbelievable. It is. Which one? This one. And that one, Joey, I can tell you now. I mean, which is the most from, expensive one? The one that's the most expensive is the one that you like the least. No way. This yeah. one? That one's from Niki Stan. This one? The, the one with, yeah. Through the this flag. is the most expensive? Yep. How is this Food possible? Food God is fucking gonna condemn know. this place. Look, I mean. Niki Stan, but uh, you know the thing is with these places, I didn't try it. I probably should have tried it first. Mm-hmm. I'm probably sure to try it. It looks so cheap. The taco stand, mm. so the other one's a taco stand and the other one's a naked taco. The naked taco's the one in the middle, taco stand's the least. Which is this one? That one's, um, which one's that? This one's is taco from, stand? With the big, with the big shrimp. No, that's, no, 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 that one's from uh, Mama's, or Naked Taco. Where's that? Where is the naked yeah. taco located? I gotta tell you, taste-wise, by the way, I got up. This bring, taco stand. Can you uh, the taco stand? stand is my can you have, taco the, have the maid bring up another? Yeah. Have, bring up another iced tea for me. I want to chase my. Where is this? Where is the taco stand? The taco stands in downtown Brickell, I believe. What, these shrimp taste unbelievable the, to the me. The middle one. Uh huh. Dang it! Wow. They taste the freshest, and they look the best. Wow. Mm. This corn shell is unbelievable as well. So you're a real foodie, huh? Mm, all day. 
like I did a Cosmo thing where they gave me like 20 foods, cheapest and most expensive, like kind of he did, right. but it was like right at it. I got 19 right. Really? I'm out of 20. Just, I'm like the exact opposite. Like I eat just because like I have to eat because I'm hungry. I, I don't use food for pleasure. And like my wife is the exact opposite. She fucking loves, it's a big they deal. Live, like eating is like a big food. deal. Yeah, you know? that's me. Yeah, interesting. I had to take my handcuff off. It's my, I got this gorgeous, you know Jacob the Jeweler? Okay. What? You fucking, I got a Jacob the Jeweler story that will fucking. I love, so they gave me this for my birthday. I don't want to scratch it while you Angela, took it off. Right? Angela, that's okay, my girl. So it's my listen, birthday listen, gift listen. from them. You're going to love this. The one. love cup. This is my iced tea cup. That okay? is the All best right, iced tea. Three. Okay. You taste these. This is, this is, How have you been in Miami for? Because I'm still not used right. to the heat. It's so hot. So I'm this here. is um oh, you get out half and half too one half and half right yeah, one half and half. I'm instantly drawn to this. Is one that's lemonade. I, I like yeah. color. And this drinks. is really healthy, all natural, no fucking sugar added. Glass bottles, really no preservatives. It's great. Is, stuff. is it made it's in business. Montauk? Is that yeah? The company's located in Montauk, wow. and it's been it's the business is booming right now. We just got the biggest distributor. It's really really good. Stuff's like crack. It's addictive. Once you, I'm telling you, it's really good. Mm. That's a good lemonade. Right? Really good. Very the good lemonade. The big thing is also the wow. glass bottles it makes a big difference. This right? is lemonade almost like you get at the at the at the carnivals. Exactly, right? The, the make it for Try you. Try this one. You like iced tea at all? Sometimes. I don't it, I don't get pulled to iced tea and it's so weird because I love tea. Mm. And it's I don't really know why too. I don't go for iced tea. I just it, in my head I'm always like, I don't drink iced coffee either, and I could drink cappuccinos and espressos all day. I just think because I love those so much, these I never want to mess it up. This, you're right, these are the best shrimps. No, oh, these shrimps are incredible. Mm. I see they're dying of hunger. Don't worry, we'll go no, eat You want right one? Come on, go no, eat. I'm going to get the pirate chip off the back there. Like, what is that thing? It's a right I just got a new boat. I'm waiting for it. I gotta re had to redecorate it, but it's coming like we two weeks. We love living on the water here. I got a beautiful boat. I live on the, I live on the, on the ocean. foot azimuth. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, really nice. We'll go with a beach cruise. <laughs> 100%. We'll go on yeah. one day. Oh, it's it's getting comedy. redecorated. So, yeah, right? So, I'll tell you. Okay, ready for this great... You're going to love this fucking story. Before Jacob the Jeweler was even known by anybody, right? He was just getting started, yeah. right? Two, it's probably... Not, it's nine, no, it's 2000, 2001, right? And the mortgage refi boom had just started, right? Right to drop everyone's refinancing. I already had gotten in trouble, right? So I was under in, I, right, I was under indictment, right? That's good stuff. That's right? I think I, I've never drank a combo because right. I don't drink, but it's like, really good, right? That's no, the most no, because I don't really I don't drink I, I don't ever like choose iced tea or lemonade. Half and I half. I drink ginger ale all That's day. That's the one. But nice. this is Sol really good. Solid, I would right? love, I'd love this with bubbles. That's fucking good. Yeah, oh, right. Half yeah. <laughs> There you go, right? That's what I, that's food, what I do. Food like God that. has spoken, right? Right. So Let's anyway, do a half and half bubble version. We'll call so, it the so Food God. Add friend, it in. So a friend of mine, right, calls me up. He owns a small mortgage company. He's like, hey, I want you to, can you help me write a telemarketing strip, blah, blah, blah. So I, I did that. And it just, anyway, I ended up taking point partners in this company, right? And I had this idea. You know, when everyone's out there calling on the phone, I'll just go fucking door to door. I was rebuilding my life. I just had lost everything, right? right? So I go out there myself. I start knocking door to door to business to business to business. And I'm making a fucking fortune. I'm making like $15,000 a day. Amazing. Like right out of the yeah. gate, right? Because everyone's refined. So I'm always looking for these sort of high concentration places, right? To, to go knock on, on doors, right? So I said, you know what? I got the perfect place, the jewelry district. Everyone's a business owner. I'm just gonna go booth to booth to booth. Say, hey, what are you paying in your home mortgage right now? You know, if he's paying more than eight percent, I can save you a ton of money, right? Did that? I made that day made one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in one day refining people's homes. The last place I walk into is the corner of Forty Seventh and Six, right? Yeah. And I walk in, and it's the end of the day, and I have, and I, and I, I was I owned the company, so I have four people I'm training, so they're following me, right? As I'm going <laughs> ghosts and watching, the ghosts, right? right. right? Waiters with the ghosts. Right. It's one thing I could do is fucking sell it, right. you know, right? So good. It's like my fucking wow. specialty, right? And I was door to door, I'm a fucking the killer, right? So I walk in and I'm like, hey guys, you know, hey, my name's Jordan, I'm a mortgage broker in here. And it's Angela, I don't know who she is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, we don't allow any solicitors to come here. And I keep talking. And she goes, I said, what are you, she goes, I'm paying uh, eight and a half percent. I'm like, oh, she's, why am I talking to you? She says, what the fuck? And somehow using my powers of persuasion, she's like, I don't understand why I haven't thrown you out yet. I, this doesn't make any sense. I don't want anyone to come in here. And then she's like already 
in report right, me we'll laugh right, at right. and she's like well you know what You'll if you can get by my husband he fucking hates everybody let's go upstairs to see my husband he upstairs, yeah, yeah, right? yeah 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 so I said alright let's fucking go so I said you guys wait downstairs right so I have my four guys wait downstairs I'm in the elbow with Angela and she's like I, I don't understand why I'm even talking to you but like this, you're not you're a more guy you're something different about you right anyway right? Yeah, we go upstairs I see pro. Jacob right he starts to abuse me I fucking give him shit right fucking back he fucking instantly just senses that I'm not the average person right, right? Yeah. and next thing you know I'm in their house they're like, all right, come over for dinner tonight. Right, Shabbat. <laughs> Friday night. Even though it was midweek. It was oh, mid- it was midweek. We go to the house yeah. in the Forest Hills. Right. Gardens. Yes, that? yes. Did yes. they still live there? They had yeah. a beautiful home yeah, in the Forest. Yeah, they a house there. And all right, beautiful. Home. apartment they take, I end up refining their fucking house for them. No way. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's They great. sent me all their friends. We became, so anyway, and that was it. Then I ended up leaving the business, right? And out of business completely, right? And I went to jail, came out, wrote this book, okay? And a few years later, I'm, I, I fucking somehow was like, I was in a newspaper and she calls me, now I know why I fucking, we liked you. We didn't yeah, get, you yeah, get it? They yeah, didn't yeah. know all those right, years, right? Right, right. we lost touch. Like, course. holy fucking shit. You were the guy. She, I was, she knew there was something different. How funny is that? Yeah, but different is what works. That's it. Different is what He's works. He's built an incredible You have no idea. Business, right? Not only do they have that insane store that's on 57th Watch Street. the watch line also, The right? watch line. I, I just was with them when they gave me this for my birthday. And I told Jacob, I said, forget about jewelry. You are the next Richard Milley. You are the next Pat. Your, your watches have credibility. Right. He's making $1 million, $3 million, $20 million watches. And in the streets, they're credible. Right. I said, you need to open up. Not more jewelry store in Bell Harbor. I go make it the Jacob uh, Company watch store Geneva. Right, right, like, right, right. That, Your watches yeah. are your billion dollar brand. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. I said, come up with like a a, a specific one watch that everybody wears, like a forty thousand dollar one, and then the million dollar ones, the three hundred thousand dollar ones, but one that you get on everybody. And I told them that like literally two weeks ago. I said, you you you're in. You made the watches are legit. Yeah, you're incredible nice. now. He's so built, he's a very smart guy, by the course, way. Of course. Very smart guy. He's got it too. And Angela's a sweetheart. The best. I love her. Right? Love her. Small world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Really- and when I did PR, they came up with this five time zone watch. They said, give it to us. We gave it to Diddy and all these people. Let's take these issues. Yeah. yeah. And thing. we blew this, we blew the watches up. So I basically made them famous. Great. Yeah. Great story. It's good story. So, so huh? okay, let's get back to the food guy, right? So, we, yeah. we, okay, what is, does the food guy rate good and bad food? So, I, I don't really rate food. What I do is I, sh- I show people experiences, over the top food, original food, fun food. What I don't do is bring them in the kitchen to give you recipes or talk about really the chef or how it's made because the people now just want to know the place. And the food. Got it. That's all they care about. Do you go to restaurants and say, this restaurant is great, this restaurant sucks, or you don't get good to negative? I don't do the sucks. I feel really, right. especially now. with every, you can hurt someone, right? You could hurt someone and people get really offended. Like, why would you go there and say it's bad? I'm like, because I hated it. Right. And it's horrible. I think I should be able to give my opinion. But as everything else these days, you can't give your opinion anymore. So what you say- so I find the so, good uh, stuff. So I'll, if you I'll, find I'll, something's great, you'll yes, say if something's yes. bad, you just won't write about I it? I just really won't talk about Got it. No, it. I'm not like a food no, review. Viewer, right. I'm more of like a food presenter and an experienced presenter. Like I'll go to Ibiza and I went to this place, Sublimotion, which is like 4D eating, where it's 12 people and the whole thing moves, the table, the walls, the whole thing. And now they have one at this place, Xpot in Vegas, which is on my show on, on the Food Network and Discovery Plus, the Food God Show, uh, which is so cool. And I love, and I love sitting next to someone at a restaurant be like oh my god like I was at Zuma a couple years ago we came here because of you and we just we're doing a party for a hundred people here because of you or we 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 ordered this because of you or we came here and wherever it is or like I love putting a local pizzeria that is like perfect paper thin and like not brick oven and like still the old ovens but still done you know there's no crust but the cheese goes to the crust where it's burnt I love finding that you're kind of stuff you're a New Yorker right I'm a New Yorker so me too right? I'm a New so you Yorker understand, like, yes, pizza. of course do like, I right? ever even right? in New Jersey or even better pizza it annoys me like I, 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 it's it's like I still can't wrap my head around the everything pizza. Like no, I grew up, no. right? It was like I a want slice. Slice. <laughs> I want a plain slice. I want to fold it. I want to have a bend. Exactly. I want the oil to go down. <laughs> right? And I'm really picky about it. But I do have a great trick. For, have you been to Steve's Pizza here? No. You, you must. Really? Yeah. It's like from 1980. Where is it? Uh, it's right on Biscayne on like 160th, 130th okay. Street, whatever. 
it's insane. It's like it looks like a, a rock concert inside. Meaning there's all graffiti and like all the keys like they did in the '80s, like right. on the on the wall covered. The slices are like this big if you get the pie there, and it's just like everyone's pissed and angry, and they just go and they're shoving three, <laughs> the four. The Peter like, of pizza. Yeah, yeah fuming, <laughs> but it is goes till three in the morning. It is real pizza. It's really? the only real pizza that I love here in Miami. I don't do brick. We got a good. We got a thumbs up. Steve's Pizza. Yeah. All right, so now, tell me about the silly sushi, your NFT stuff, which I think is pretty cool. So as I'm growing and learning about NFTs, you know, someone came to me and they're like, we want to do an, I've said no to 50 of them. So we have this silly sushi NFT and the utilities on this are amazing. Dinner with me at Nobu Malibu, uh, dinner with me at Masa, um, amazing like gold chopsticks, uh, all different stuff. And I, I, I do love the world of NFTs and the art on this one is just amazing and it was just minted and now we're gonna you know take the utilities and it's just such a fun thing to learn this whole new world of nfts you know so and the next thing is going to be i think the food god food court metaverse i think that's yeah. where it's going yeah well listen i think that it's it's the beginning of the beginning it really it's is and i think that in five years from now you're going to see nfts and things that are essentially tokenized that you would never even imagine. I think it's a huge um, leap forward here in ownership and especially digital ownership. Yeah. And uh, well, we don't know exactly what the metaverse is going to look like or be. It's almost like in the 1800s, they're lay laying down all the railroad track. And you know, some shit's going to pop up because human beings are ingenious. Right. They're always thinking. So I think we don't even know what's going to come, no but it's going to be amazing. It's so fun though to watch. Yeah, it's, it's really, amazing. and you can't be one of those people. I was a little bit for, oh, I don't know about the, whenever the people say those NFTs, that's when it's, uh, you can't, people used to do <laughs> like that. My mother, I don't know about yeah, those. So, so that's what happened with Instagram. I don't know about that. So I almost did this with TikTok, which is funny. Back at when it was Facebook back, back, back then. And then Instagram started. And a lot of these, I used to be friends, a lot of the housewives. And oh, I don't know that Instagram thing I used to see. And then of course they fell behind by five, six years. Then they started on Instagram realizing that it was the, the gold, but they would always say that, you know, that Instagram thing. So when TikTok started, it was so big, but it was like all young kids dancing and stuff. Yeah. I call myself, I was like, oh, I'm on Instagram, I'm gonna four million people. I don't gonna do you know that TikTok thing. And all of a sudden, one day, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. I'm, I'm one of the fucking housewives. Yeah. I'm gonna be behind. Holy shit! Now I have almost nine million people on TikTok yeah. because I, I, I just like you can't be. You can never. You gotta like just look into. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But don't be like, yeah, I don't know about. I have so many people that are like, oh, that NFT. The second they say thing, I'm Man. always like, oh, that's it. You're gonna be left behind. <laughs> don't think anything. Just go check it out. Let's talk about the best restaurants in your opinion in Miami. As we're here. So, what's your top? What's your favorite restaurant? So, Miami? always I'd say the hottest are always the Dave Grubman restaurants. Okay, I know so Dave. You know, Dave, really nice yeah. Guy. So I just love Dave. We were just at his house. Dave creates an experience. He, you know, is one of my best friends. I've known him since we've both known each other since before everything has gone on. And Dave is an experienced guy. Uh, so it's like good food mixed with celebrities and hot people and all that. I love that stuff. So, but then there's also restaurants where you go to eat right. just food. Like, so give me like, like top. What's like overall like in Miami? So Great. I love. I mean, I love places like Milos. I love Makoto in Val Harbor. I just Harbor went to Milos for, for lunch. That's Mark's where I Mark's twenty nine dollar. Mark there. Roberts twenty nine dollars lunch, and you think yeah. you're coming alone, and there's thirteen right. people there. Exactly. And I know every one of those lunches. You know, <laughs> yeah. Do you know I went to college? I know Mark for forty two years. Wow, that's crazy. A, I love him to death. He's a good guy. My king boy. King. Every, king. He's a, is that a, is that an amazing? salesman yeah he's a great salesman. well in your book of one to ten and your what's his what's his sales ability one to ten since so you're like a hundred I, I would call him as a i would i wouldn't even say he's a salesman as much as a as a promoter promoter he's an incredible wow. he's an incredible that probably one of the best they've ever seen yeah, in terms of a, you know i'm sure he's a great salesman too right. not to take away from his right. ability but he's to not close. a sales guy i don't look at him as a sales of guy course, he's a he's promoter way bigger, yes right yes yes and i think he's got an amazing sense of brand right Right? right, and he and he really um, does an incredible job at putting people together. And I'll tell you what he does really well. There's some people in the world who say, "Hey, can you introduce me to that guy?" Yeah, I, I want two percent. If I, Mark will g help you. Yep, I'll call him right now. Dave Grumman is the same exact way. And ask for nothing. He's not scared to mix people. And ask for nothing. Zero. Exactly. Great. Right. And yeah, I'll connect you right now. Quality. And those people have gotten so far. So my wife said to me, she goes, "Why do you always connect people?" And don't you? I'm like. I don't, if I, if I, if listen, if I can add value to the deal, right. I don't have to ask, they'll offer it to me. Right. And if I can't, I don't want anything anyway, right? Yeah. So some people are so 
Shh, don't right, say, let's just right. Move on. They're just so st- st- you know, stingy with their connections, I and I believe that some of the most successful people I know, like a Mark Roberts or just others, that just like they're very generous yeah. and like a Dan. You know Dan Fleischman. You probably know Dan yeah, Fleischman. Yeah, yeah. Another guy like that, just very yeah. generous with yeah. his connections and doesn't try to hold back information. Right, you know, right. yeah, great quality of this man. Adam Weitzman, who's another guy like that, who's an unbelievable guy who just loves to bring people and like, hey, we're going to a fight. Ten front row tickets. Gets the plane. Gets everybody together and loves to mix exactly and i love people like that you know i'm not sure that i'm even fully like that so i can't even uh, you know say that because i'm always like so weird with introducing people and not just because of like i don't care about the money part at all it's just i feel like something always happens and it's mm. a and and i don't want to be that person in the middle right. some people don't care they, they you you could like get it off like cut it out of your chest i'll be like it's on my heart i don't right, want to hear right, about right, it like right, right, yeah right. i don't know what he do. i don't know i don't care you ask right, me here right. it is so but i that's why I, I never do that but i love people that do i really appreciate it what about um okay so you mentioned milos so right? i love milos what i else? love um i love il molino okay uh lavo's coming into town which is going to be a big hot restaurant in sunny isles at aquilina you How know, about uh, Carbone? I love Carbone. Don't kill me, Dave. I eat there too much. I, yeah. I gained like 10 pounds last year eating there three nights a week. So I've seen you there a couple of times. Poppies? Poppies on fire. Pop, like Poppy, Poppy, I've known, I like I've Poppy. known Poppy <laughs> since he was doing steaks at his, uh, in his backyard in the Best city. Best fucking pastrami in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but Wagyu take, pastrami. And, the thing and he this. really created a brand. And I, we right? just flew back together, me, him, and Dave from Vegas. And I told Poppy, I said, you know, that... I love the brand. I don't think it'll work everywhere because it's too amazing. Like tourists love that kind of stuff. But I said a poppy steak in every city without all of that glitz would right. be amazing because the food has gotten so good Food's there. Really and good. his vibe the food is really his good. His vibe is just like he's always on and he's so entertaining that you really want to be around it. I think it's like a modern day version of a steak. I, I don't like old steakhouses too much and not to talk shit about Peter Luger's. And then the, I just I was devastated with this review I read. You read that yeah, terrible. Oh my God, they killed him. But you know what? I might... I'm much more advanced now that I just don't want sides of like potato lyonnaise and like, you know, uh, hash browns or whatever. I just, I want like fun sides. There's something you said that connected with me like from my childhood is the angry way to throwing the food at you. And you just kind of love, right? That old yeah, thing when you go to the, the old Jewish deli, like, yeah, yeah. boom, they, they throw, what do you want? Do it, boom. Yeah, nasty. let's go. What do you want? Oh, I'm scared to ask for like, can I have salt, please? Right, right, You're like right. scared. I'm like scared to ask them, which is crazy. You know, so. All right, so we keep going here. So we're in Miami. So what yeah, else? so I love, so I also love little places. There's a place called Itzix in Israel. Israeli, Israeli place, which is up in, uh, on Dixie Highway, like all the way up. Incredible. I like those little spots like Steve's, Itzix too, but I do right. love Carbone. I love Il Molino. Um, I love Poppy because Poppy is one of those entertainment things. Mila? Great, uh, Mila, I, I like during the pandemic. Um, I don't really go there anymore okay. for some reason. It's, I don't like restaurants to turn too much into a party. That's right. I like to, I like yeah, to eat sure. and I don't like people dancing on the tables when I'm eating. It's just my thing. I'll go to live for that after. But, How about a, a recent one? I started going at La, La Petite Maison. Oh well, that's a legend. No, that's a that's that's a Michelin almost star. Right, restaurant. really good yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's but that we've been eating that in Cannes and in, in Dubai, and it's been around for a long time. That's a major. Let's top go outside restaurant. Miami. Let's go. Let's go global. Give me your top global. five restaurants. So there's in a the place world. in Paris that I love called Le Mie Louis. With when you talk about nasty waiters, I'll find you a picture of a face. You walk in, you're scared to even say you're here. You can't even get through the door. They don't. T- they don't. They have reservations like seven months in advance. Yeah. It's a tiny. It's not like a glamorous restaurant. They invented apparently rotisserie chicken in this place. So when they bring the chicken, they walk out like this in the tub and. Uh, I remember Kim had one for her wedding, the the one with the Kanye wedding that we were there. We went, we we were there because one of the dinners was there that that uh, Chris did, and uh, we were just like, oh my god! First of all, the pate, the whole thing, and I go there a couple times myself after, and the guy that opened the door, I have never seen a. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Nasty face like this. Yeah, that, that really, really, really nasty. Right. Um, so I love that. There's a place there in France with the number of ducks. What place is that? You, you must have been there. I do there. know. I can't remember the, the look, name. The looking Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah, the yeah. name. I have so many names in my head. Uh, I love a place Louis called... Louis the... F- yes, I know. I know what place you're talking about. 
Well, okay, give me some other good I ones. I love around. Gaia in Monaco and Dubai. It's a, like a Mediterranean. They I've eaten there in gorgeous. Dubai. Gorgeous. Oh my God, with the flowers and yeah. and the whole. Th I like. I need everything. I'm not just about food. I really it's, like the combination. I am an experienced guy, and I always tell people if you want recipes and you want a real food person, sure. go follow someone else. Or locally, I'm not going to find you. You know, the, the best Asia. I bet Manhattan best restaurants. Oh Manhattan. God, that's a tough one. They got so, good food. They love, I love. Right. I love restaurants. I love Elio's Wednesday nights. I love their parms the okay. paper thin parms i love i love raul's uh steak au poivre the best in the city of course you've been to rayo's but, right of course i love rayo's but rayo's is more of a package yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know it's not the best doesn't, food by the, the way world, it does not great. translate outside of that one restaurant no the one in la was like no, not even the like one in eat. vegas was not it yeah you need yeah. the people you need yeah, the yeah. accents you need the, the impossible thing. tables like the, the crowd the crowd you know go I, I love it i love that vibe so yeah. you know there's those kind of places but then i also love cipriani i love you know zero bond which is my new favorite spot i'm a founding member have you been there yet no where oh, it's a private Here? no it's in my it's in new york okay no wow it's on it's on bond street zero Bond. Zero bond. It's the hottest, most exclusive, amazing. You know, the mayor, mayor Eric Adams, got a lot of shit because he was hanging out there every night because it is like incredible there. I mean, it is like the who's who, the CEO of this one, the CEO of that, the CEO of this, plus mixed in with like full movie stars, plus all the athletes that are in town. Right. And it's like three floors and it's uh, Scott Sartiano who owned One Oak. Okay. He owns that uh, place and it's like the hottest place in town and my favorite restaurant in new york that i go to polo bar uh that's my vibe okay it's everything one more la la i used to live there so, so i'm you know craig's is like my home right so but i love nobu malibu i love you know Catch one of the most beautiful fun. restaurants. Nobu Malibu, I think, by far. Is an experience, is right? A, between that, Casa Cipriani, the new membership Casa in New York, which is also the nicest restaurant in the country. The most beautiful room I've ever seen in the country, by far. And Nobu Malibu would be... Uh, Giorgio Baldi is one of my favorite Italians. How does someone... Okay, so like, listen, uh, people think like say, these two fuckers, yeah, because they can get into any restaurant they want. How does yeah, the, how does the, but how does the average person... Like, let's say you listen to this, you want to experience one of these restaurants. Some you can, right? Like, for right. instance, no, Nobu Malibu, you just yeah. make a reservation so in advance, right? Three days. Right, right. La Petite Maison, right. no problem, right. Right. right? A lot of these is right. only a few are right. Exclu right. exclusive, right? But um, is there a secret that you can share with us about if you're, let's say you're not a famous person, can you get into one of these right. really Right, so when I was not a famous person, but I was just like a publicist and stuff, right. somehow I always, you know, you go, you try to get in somehow. It doesn't matter if it's six o'clock, three o'clock, two o'clock. I always like to get the situation. And I always say, it takes me to, like if I go to a place, maybe somebody doesn't, you know, people don't know me at a restaurant. And I'm like, God, I love this place. And I'm like, they're giving me no respect. Like even as Fugat or even as John, you know, sometimes they don't know. Well, you no just, one is going to disrespect you just, no, Fugat. You just miss, somebody I don't missed fucking the morning, somebody that doesn't watch yeah, TV. Or I don't fucking hear about that so shit. So it's very rare, but I'm it's like, all right, up. they'll give me, I, I said, I need like two times here. Yeah. So I'll go to the one and I'll see like who, what is going on? Who's running? Who's da, 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 da. By the second time, they'll get a sh good schmooze and then you'll be like, I'll call you next time I'm in town or like I left the, there's, there's just ways and normal people can pull it off too. We'll convince Fugat to trash your restaurant if you don't find no. but, but, you know, Fugat must come, all right? right. Um, what about the old fashioned, like when you, like when I was young and no one and just fucking pay at the front door, does that work? It does, but a lot of people are so anti that because you know, it's a whole new world. Like that's insulting. It's insulting. So you can't insult people by giving them a hundred. What are you, a fucking socialist, right? I mean, come it's on, like, I mean, you're fuck insulting. you. Like, right? yeah. It's like, no, like you want to give somebody a tip, it's okay to take it, but please, everything is so weird now and you're not allowed to do, do think, this. What do you the, think that is? I just don't know. And I'm just, it's, it's annoying for people to be like scared to do anything at this point. So so like giving a tip someone can be insulting to somebody and they would like, it, it could backfire. In the mm. old days, it was great. And I think it's only, I think maybe because everything's on camera. Interesting. And I think that is really why. I think there's just, there's fucking eyes watching you from everywhere. It's like I did Celebrity Big Brother in the UK. It's one of those things that you're like, look, we're talking now. You can forget there's a camera on. Oh, let me just give the, the fans here a tip here. So just, just so you guys don't know. It's like the tip for this thing is here like this. It's like. The yeah, yeah, no problem. I just see it. Hey, buddy, hey, buddy and it's a two handed shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> I'm insulted. Delete. Yeah, 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 delete. 
Nice, nice to meet you, buddy. Hey, thank you. Well, thank you. And then they slip. Then they slip. I love watching it go down, too, because they're so fast. <laughs> right. They, 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 they slip. Right. It's like a car trick. And then they're like, thank you, bye. And the thing is gone. You know, when you respect them more, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that they deserve, they've earned it. Some press around, I think once, like many years ago, before I was, you know, famous, right? Um, I gave someone like 100 bucks and they didn't do anything for me. I was like, give me the fucking money back. Give me the fucking money back. You can't get it back. You run the risk, right? And they'll show you love. I'm like, yeah. well, let me fucking tell you something, yeah. you know? So it's, it's tough out there. But listen, there's ways to go with somebody that made a reservation. Like, three, right. you know, there's a bunch of hot new restaurants in LA. I haven't even gotten a chance to go to them too. So I don't know. I'll have to call somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Let me ask you a question. What is it? <laughs> That I could talk. I know we got a guy. I could talk to you all day, right? You're you're just like me. You fucking can talk, right? Yeah, all day. What what do you um? Is there some formula that makes a restaurant hot? What is it? Is it the people? Is it the ambiance? Is it the food? What, well, what first of all, I think it starts with the owner. Okay. I think the owner, you know, whether it's a chef owner or an owner that owns a lot of places, it has that kind of following. I think that's the start. Uh, food is second for depends what kind of restaurant you want. If it's about food, yeah, food. If the food is good, the world the word will get out. Right. But if it's a fun atmosphere, and I gotta tell you, the biggest thing is celebrities. Celebrities make restaurants hot. You go sure. open a restaurant, could be dead. You know, Beyonce walks in, that's it. That's what happened with this uh, restaurant in, in L.A. There's two. I'm blanking on the name. It just opened. Beyonce came. It was like a whatever restaurant. Beyonce came there, and then all of a sudden, you can't get in. Sure. You cannot get in there. And that's how it works. And that's just how the world works. So if you have any kind of connection to a celebrity, uh, that's a great start. The chef, a name, a good name chef is a good start. And just, I hate basic restaurants too. I walk in some places and I'm like, they have the brown chairs from uh, Pier 1 and like these dark brown tables. And I'm like, come on, like really like get some, you got to have identity. A restaurants with no identity will not make it. And, and I don't mean hole in the walls. Those are authentic. I love those. I love an amazing old school hole. But when, if you're doing a new restaurant, I don't want Pier 1 Imports furniture. Like, go source it. Figure it out. Like, figure it out. Give some kind of identity. Two subjects I want to cover before we, we end here. Because I, I really, you're, I find you really fascinating. Um, a little bit too much like myself in some respects, right? But <laughs> <Some>. but, <laughs> but um, n number one is, so like you have a skill set that I believe transcends being, you know, an influencer or a business person. It's, it's a skill set I think that every business person can use. So how, what, what advice would you give? I have a lot of entrepreneurs yes. that watch this. So what, what would you give, what, what would you say to entrepreneurs in terms of how is, how does someone that wants to raise their profile, is there something that you could, like some sort of roadmap of, that anyone can use or is it different for every person? My roadmap for me is like with Food God, for example, because I'm building a brand. You know, first of all, I have a bunch of products. I have to, I, it would be crazy not to mention them on a yeah, podcast yeah. like this. I have Food God Zero, which is uh, zero nicotine vapes made with Food God flavors. So I'm like, if I'm going to ask you to quit smoking, I'm going to give you incredible flavors. Okay. Rosé, Bellini, uh, Pink Pineapple. Blue banana, which is a real banana. None of my things. I don't do like raspberry, strawberry. Sure, yeah, yeah. I do real fruits that and are. And where would they find the product? So Food God Zero, and they're going to be foodgodzero.com. They're going to be in stores uh, right now. I have a meal plan delivery called Food God Fresh, foodgodfresh.com. $13 meals based on restaurants I go to. Okay. So we kind of, you know, simulate our favorite pasta from a favorite place that we How gain fucking 10 good is that from. Fucking pasta. Uh, I don't know what pasta you're talking about, but so we have our pasta. I'm going to say it. It's fucking car bones, <laughs> fucking spicy rigatoni. It's unbelievable. It's it's like heroin in there. It's I swear to God. It's absolute heroin. Dude, I called him. It's my friend's Alec. I, I, my guy, I said, buddy, I, I, could you deliver it to the house? He goes, like, I can't do it. I said, come on. It's please, like, I'm, I'm on delivery please, to my <laughs> Please deliver it. It's really so, it's the yeah, best. Right? It's yeah. good. So, but I found like places that I love my buffalo wings with a specific blue cheese. I'm very picky on everything. So, so you, you deliver those? So it's five, 10, 15 meals. You'll deliver. You order it anywhere in the country. They come to your house in like a day or two. And you put them in the uh, microwave or oven and you cook them up. And I'm doing. It's called, what's the website? Uh, foodgodfresh.com. And I'm doing collabs food God, with restaurants. Foodgodfresh.com. Food God God. Okay. So I'm getting recipes with NDA from restaurants uh, like Brooklyn Chop House, their famous chicken satay, which originated from another famous place that we love chicken satay from the most famous. And uh, so we have their, we, we have the recipe and now you could order it to your house in Ohio or Arizona. You okay. get the satay, $13 really? and you get five, 10, 15 meals, you know, $13 a meal. 
which are based on all the amazing restaurants I go to. Okay. And it's kind of like, to me, the gold belly of food delivery because I'm going to be getting restaurants that I love. They're little special dishes, an amazing lasagna from a place in a hole in the wall that I love in New Jersey, you know, a cacio pepe lasagna. We're going to get that recipe from them, you know, and they get a little piece of the, sure. of the pie as well. But it's Got just it. now you get to try this amazing food. So and then I have food, got ice creams and all that stuff. So, and I'm a, a, a lot, you know, involved with a lot of companies. Cash Drop is one of them, which is like kind of like a new Shopify. And let's talk know. about the, you, you mentioned before we started about yes. a, a platform that yes. you have, right? For yes. Well, I partnered with a company. And, yeah, it's called Trade Zing, and they're kind of taking. How do you spell a, that? Uh, Trade Z I Z I N G. So T R A D E Z I N G. Yes, Trade Zing. Trade Zing. Yeah, and it's a platform for anyone that's interested in crypto, NFTs, pretty much anything in that. In that and what is it? What is in it? That information, news. Information, news. You get to talk. It's a full community. People help each other. People help learn. I'm still learning, and that's why I love this because I'm learning about all of it. And it's going to be a platform where you literally go, and it's a community, and it's almost like you, there's videos. There's people talking to you. You put your own stuff. People help you with stuff. It's an amazing, amazing platform, and they're really sponsoring a lot of the whole uh, crypto week uh, here in Miami, uh, and it's called Tradesing. So it's a very, very cool uh, thing, and also. So, you know, I, I'm involved with a lot of great companies, uh, Pure Greens, a juice company expanding into over 400 locations they're already here. Um, they're, they're getting all over the country. And I come up with like Food God drinks, my own Food God smoothie, which is their number one smelling smooth, uh, smelling, uh, selling smoothie, uh, the blue banana, which is a banana that tastes like ice cream. Okay. Um, and how about some advice for the people? So huh? what I was saying, the advice is, you need to stick with what you're doing. You know how many people laughed at Food God, haha, ha, food, you're changing your name to Food God. And by the way, I went to court legally. I changed my name to Food God because if you're going to be a brand these days, and especially me coming out of a humongous brand, which is like the biggest brand and could be the world, the Kardashians, I needed to come up with my own thing. And for people to understand that I really am fully passionate 24 hours a day. My day revolves around food. I said, I'm not just gonna be Jonathan, that's Food God. I went to court, got a lawyer, and I changed my name legally to one word, Food God, because I would never say Food God. I don't wanna insult anybody who believes in God. It's not, it's, it's not that, it's Food God is one word. So it's not like Food God, it's Food God. There's right. like no last name legally. Um, it's crazy, but you have to believe in your thing. And so many people were laughing and Food God, blah, blah, blah. meanwhile, I'm, I think probably the most influential name in food on where to go, what to do. I have over 12 million followers that follow me. You know, I have videos, I get 30 million views on TikTok, 40 million views, um, And but I deal with everything. Another thing is I deal with high and low. Don't pigeon yourself, yourself in, the, in the one category. I mix everything. I'll go to find you the best buffalo wings and I'll find you the best $3,000 dinner. That's, that's another trick. Everyone right away, like, I need to be like high end. No. Right. You know, you got to do everything that appeals to every. The more people you hit, it's like I was watching Shark Tank once. And I remember they're like, it was a pregnancy pillow. So they're like, I don't really know if we want to do this. Not only are you already cutting out men, so that's already gone. Half the market is gone. Now you're cutting out, you know, 90% of women because they're not pregnant all at the same time. Right. So it's like, what's the point of that market? I'm like, you know what? That's a really good idea. Like, I want to make sure I hit everybody. So I do like fun hole in the wall places. I do crazy places. I do. And it's the difference is you need to find a difference. I found out that I'm not doing recipes and I'm not talking about the chefs. Mm. They don't want to see that on social media. They want to see the place that I go to. They want to see the food that I go to. And they want to know that they could photograph it and have fun with their friends. What about the... Um the downside of fame. Do, does ever, do, do you ever find yourself uh, thinking that, you know, on some level, going out and always being recognized wears on you? Or is it something that you just fully embrace and have no qualms about it at all? I, I don't mean that, obviously it's good for your business. Of course. of course, right? And you know, but did ever you say, sometimes I just, you know, it's a little bit annoying that wherever I go, people recognize me. Would you like to be anonymous or no? To be honest, I feel like I worked so hard and like it would almost be a slap in the face of fame to say that I don't want it or I would want to be anonymous. For example, does a Kim Kardashian ever say, this is great and I just love my fans, but I would just love for a no, second, never. No, never I just feels think, like I it. think you just, it's part of it, you know, and it's part of, you know, Kim has it on a whole different level where the, you know, helicopters outside of her house, but she walks and doesn't even react to it, you know, at this point. And for me, yes, you know, it's not on a level of Kim, but anywhere I go, everybody knows me. And, and 
all different countries. You know, I've done a lot of shows in the UK, people from, you know, Saudi Arabia, do everywhere, you know, whether it's Jonathan, they still know me from then before Food God, from TV, or now people don't know Jonathan. They only know, if, I didn't even know your, your, I didn't know what your name was. I only know you as Food God. So it's built into that, which mm -hmm. is amazing. But there's no way I would ever say, after all the work I put in, all the TV shows I did. I started with a show called The Fabulous Life on VH1, which was The Fabulous Life of Celebrities. And I thought I was already famous going to the mall and somebody, hey, I know you from that show. And I thought I was famous then. Like, I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like, I'm on television. And the power of TV is still, you know, incredible and and I love it. And, you know, I've done a lot of shows, but, you know, being on the, on the biggest show in the world for 14 years um, is a whole, you know, and sometimes people are like, you're Kim's best friend. And I'm like, no, no, it's like people on Friends. It's like, yeah, you're that, but it's like I'm a character. People know sure. me. You know what it is, that's that, but I have my own full identity and believe me, it's like, they're like, or oh, you kiss Kim's ass. I'm like, oh, you don't know me. I'm the opposite of that. That's it. That's the annoying part of it. The people that have no clue what the fuck they're talking about when they write you or they DM you or like, you kiss Kim's ass. I'm like, oh, I'm a monster. I will tell her how it is and I'll fucking rip you apart too. Right. I go, the, the last thing I am is a kiss. I'm like a nightmare. Like I, when I'm on, when I turn on, I will literally just like destroy and I don't let anything slide either. Like I'm not like, oh, that looks so pretty. Like I love this. I love this place. I'm going to be like, why didn't you get a... Or why didn't, maybe you should get a, and so that little things like that, or people call me like, people will be like, you're on drugs, how much coke do I'm like, I have actually never even tried coke in my life, which is also unbelievable. The parties I've been to, the clubs I've been to, the amount of liquor, I don't even drink. The amount of stuff given to me and, and offered and the bottles and this, I go to bottle, I don't even see it. It doesn't even, it's just, that's not in my DNA. I don't need it. I'm good like this. If you want to get nuts, I'll be nuts with you. I don't need anything for it. I'll turn Man. up to your level right away Man. and we go and we're fucking, I'm fucking on. Or if you want to chill, I go the other way and I go, chill. I don't need anything personally right. to get me. But when people are like, oh my God, you're do, you do so much, you're sure. a drug addict, you're this, that. I'm like, my mom laughs. She knows I'm scared of a needle at the doctor. She goes, I'm never going to be putting fucking needles or do drugs. So little things like that. Uh, you know, drive me insane when people have no fucking clue. How about clue. your personal life? Married, single? No, I'm single. So single? I was dating somebody for three years and then I have been on the road literally um, for, I haven't stopped. You know, and pandemic was weird. I sat here. My mom was in my apartment in Bell Harbor. And, uh, you know, the one thing I'm blessed that we were in Florida during this yeah, horror yeah. because I wouldn't have, I don't think mentally I would have survived in New York um, or even in LA. Food God has spoken and he speaks the truth. Everyone listen, thanks for tuning in here. Awesome. Thanks for calling you really great, really Thank interesting. Thank you. Thanks and for having you, me. This is what's awesome. the best way to uh, find just Instagram on? Yeah, just for, I'm Food God everywhere. That's the thing. I've gotten it everywhere. Everywhere, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, it's all well, food. Well, God. food God would be every food God yeah. would be everywhere. One he, word he is though, everywhere. It's not food God. He's not so a God. He's not saying insulted. he's not right. He's not saying he's guy. Simply food word. God. He's simply food God. But we yes. all know what that means, which is he's the fucking God of food. All right. So everyone. Sh Share this with your friends. Also, check out his stuff. He gave you a lot of great places that you can find some high quality items. I like the uh, delivery of the uh, that's what I, was fresh yeah, food. God fresh. That's what I'm interested. In. Yeah. I'm going to check out the pasta. I'll give you a little secret it. place yeah. before I go what? in Miami. I don't know if you've What's been. It? It's called Athens Juice Bar from 1938. I've not been there. Okay, it's a little place on a uh, 60 something in Collins, tiny hole. They have they give you either cottage cheese or fruit, and they make a 20 fruit n mixed nectar that you pour over the cottage cheese of the fruit. Really? This nectar is the nectar of the gods. A nectar of food god. So that's a see, little secret place in Miami that I, you know, I don't really tell because I'm like, I don't want everyone to go well, to what's I have it called of Athens. It's Athens. from 1938. Where is it? Uh, it's like 60th and Collins. So it's 63rd and Collins. I'm well, going. you're gonna the fruit punch. They make it like right there and then. See, we always have everyone about food. Food god sheds with your friends, and I will see you next week on another awesome episode of The Wolf's Den. Take care.